in the travel industry itself? Initially, because travel agents were jealous at uh, NBC Press, that was not happy to any direct marketing because they feared exactly what happened is that there'd be a lot more agents coming in the industry. But they're now getting uh, press to where within the last couple of weeks, uh, amazing enough, uh, you know, front page of Travel Agent Magazine and three pages on the inside, you know, was the first time I've seen the recognition of uh, direct marketing, uh, tutorial, sales, agent organizations getting coverage. So it's getting recognition in the travel industry itself. How big is the travel industry in the United States? It's number one or two service industry in the United States. In most countries, it's your number one or two service industry. And what does it signify to you that this industry is uh, now paying close attention to outside travel agents and multi-level marketing outside travel agencies uh, as a method of distribution? The suppliers that I represent now are calling and say, can you give me an introduction to them? You know, who, who's handling their Hawaii? Who's handling their Jamaica? Who's handling this? And now that they see the kind of volume where I had to make <coughs> the calls initially, I'm now getting calls. I see, you know, in the trade pressure representing a travel max, uh, who's doing their South American uh, air consolidation or so. Uh, well, in that regard, uh, oh. let me interrupt just one second. Can you answer those questions? I mean, do you know individuals for Travel Max that are handling different areas? I know the suppliers that I've given them to the agency. Yes, I. Part of what I do is like I represent a consolidator. You want to go to Argentina or to Buenos Aires, and your friend of mine, you phone me up and say, "Where do I get a cheap ticket?" And I'll say. Here's the two consolidators who have the big deals. You can get 35% off. So these type of consolidators, I am introducing to TravelMax to buy. TravelMax will buy from, so that TravelMax will have better prices because of my connections in the industry. In Hawaii, I represent the Outrigger Hotels. One family owns 28 hotels. You know, there, there's occupancy there. I'm trying to make a deal that will cut a little better deal for us while we're new, while they're locking us in, and I say we're going to have this many agents get us now, you know, while while we're growing. So this company, uh, the Travel Max, would be sought out by established companies in the travel industry. Yeah. In the old days, three, four million dollar agencies were sought out. Now, if you're a thirty million dollar agency and you're a sales rep for a hotel, do you want to call a $3 million agency or do you want to call a 30? The, the, there's only so much time they have and they'd rather call one on your 10%, your top 10%. And the products that are being brought <coughs> from these vendors to Travel Max, to their representatives for either for sale to consumers or for their own personal use are, are quality products. Well, they, there's price-wise, they're all the way up. They're, they're suppliers who have been in the business long enough to, you know, I think see a trend and try to get by. They care about filling up their hotels. They care about filling an airplane seat. And revenue yield is something they're interested in. Hey, uh, Travel Weekly is one of the industry's publications? Uh, yes, it's probably the largest now, uh, probably surpassed Travel Agent. And Travel Age is one of the industry's major publications? Travel Weekly just bought Travel Age, so oh. <laughs> between the two of them, they are certainly in volume. Uh, Murdoch had owned them, and this new conglomerate bought up both of them. Okay. I'm going to hand you, uh, what is it, Mark? Defendant's exhibit number 26, two pages to that, and a number 25. Um, I recognize the Travel <coughs> Weekly article. In it, I had black hair. Here it looks like I'm bald. It was actually a well, favorable picture, we'll but I, I recognize the, the article. You, you have hair. <laughs> uh, Mr. Analik, the, the article uh, 
uh, in uh, travel weekly. Uh, could you just briefly describe uh, that? There's two pages there. What, what what is the import of that in this type of a case? Well, it's a uh, fairly new one. It's November '96. It's different than a year ago. A year ago, all of the trade magazines were were being hostile is the only way to say it to this new concept because their subscribers are travel agents and the full-time travel agent who saw this competitive force wasn't too happy about it now probably a year later you have the first time favorable articles I mean this being on the cover within the last month and three pages on the inside is something that I wouldn't have thought was going to happen for a few years and it's already happened where you're getting good stuff. The Travel Max article in Travel Weekly, uh, the same one that's November 4th, that's a very favorable article, which probably would not have happened uh, a year ago. Conversely, press <coughs> such as uh, Travel Max receives TRO in Kentucky could be fairly devastating to their business, could it uh, not? That's always much more exciting than talking about $30 million growth. It's like any other. Okay. press packages. And, uh, but it, it is from a standpoint that suppliers would be scared to deal with them. This particular action that has been taken against Travel Max not only will prejudice it in the state of Kentucky, it and all of its representatives and customers, but it will also be prejudiced uh, in the United I'm States market. Jet, um, to the use of the term prejudiced. Um, Will it be damaged? Something yeah, we'll. Mr. Allen. My angle. I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's already hurt. It's hurt. Uh, already one major airline, uh, one of the biggest airlines, has already come to Travel Max and said, you've got a criminal thing pending over there until things clear up. They actually pulled the plate, Delta. Delta has pulled the plate, not allowing Travel Max to sell because they've got a criminal action. It's the first time that there's ever been a criminal uh, arrest like this that has ever happened uh, in the United States to my knowledge. Did, did you find that amazing in this situation as, based on your own experience? The, the criminal, yes, uh, I, I no, know. No, I, I'm going to have to object because factually I don't believe Travel Max nor any of its officers have been charged uh, criminally in this matter. Uh, individual defendants uh, that were participating and recruiting representatives, I believe, have been charged criminally, but not Travel Max. defendants are here are named in this lawsuit and it all has a direct bearing on this case. Sure. Well, I mean, I think he's, what he's saying is that Travel Max Inc. or any corporate representative, they have not been indicted. Uh, is that what? Yes, is that what you're saying? That these, Max is not these folks are the independent. The independent representatives that have been, that have been indicted. indicted. All right. But in our individual indictments, it does say what's uh, what's that? Right. Sorry, no. Your Honor, I believe what the counsel is saying is that even though his testimony may not address particularly Travel Max, there are other individuals who are in the civil case also who his testimony may be relevant to that. Uh, to those individuals, even if it doesn't necessarily apply to travel max. So I, to, to that end, uh, I understand it, it what, also what you're saying. I mean, I mean, so far what I've what I've heard is that there is a travel max corporation that does a lot of bookings and that sort of thing. What I've also heard, or what I believe I'm hearing, is that these independent agents probably don't make much a whole lot of money booking flights and things. They can do it. But the money comes from selling the package to someone else. Now, whether that's right or wrong, whether there's a problem with that, they believe it's a pyramid. You believe it's a business opportunity that's fine, and there's no problem with that multi-level, you know. Uh, Your Honor, that's that's true to this extent. In the end, it is all driven though by travel. Even it, when you look at any of the material, in the end, it is driven mm -hmm. by travel. In order to get travel, you've got to have agents out there selling that travel. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, it is driven by travel, and I, I believe that's what I've heard anyway. But, but uh, the court We're is right. Us, yeah. There is a question that the issue is the tutorial. 
mm -hmm. and whether or not there's value. And I believe there's documents in there to show what the value of that is. Well, we're still early on, Correct. unfortunately, no, sorry, in the, in the hearing of this case. Okay. <laughs> but uh, well, I'll, move on. I'll move on, Your Honor. All right, please. Um, thank you. Just in reference to the, to, to the last uh, point, uh, Mr. Analik, is there any doubt in your mind that the ultimate future of Travel Max and its distributors is going to be based upon money earned from the booking of travel? This is what I hope to do with them, because if we can teach them how to get the group rather than the you know four people on the cruise, but how to get their alumni association, how to get their <coughs> ethnic groups, how to get their senior groups, uh, disability groups or so, by getting those groups, they can make that much more in travel. It doesn't take much more than to book the one person uh, to uh, Disney World or so. So my, uh, one of the jobs I had was to advertise in Travel Weekly for top travel people who could help make these deals besides myself, but could help train these people how to sell the larger groups. If we can get somebody who works as an accountant in a major firm to get all that travel, then we've got their corporate travel, but then when we send stuff, you stuff it, and you put in flyers about cruises and stuff. We hope to sell leisure travel to whatever we pick up on corporate, and every now and then luck out and get a good convention or get a uh, tour on it. But the, the problem, uh, and I just uh, I thought of an example with Delta that happened to me an hour ago. I, I had a 245 flight. I, I've got to <laughs> uh, give a, uh, a, I'm at the Travel Agent Association in uh, uh, Hilton Head this week and I've got to give a speech tomorrow. So I had a 245. So there's a 550 on US Air or there's a 7 o'clock Delta. And I phoned up Travel Max and I said, just in case, get me the 7 o'clock Delta. And the girl said, don't you remember? We don't have Delta. And I started laughing, which, you know, sick sense of humor. But uh, <laughs> I said, oops, you better get me on the 550 with, uh, uh, with US Air. We couldn't today, being a $30 million agency, where normally the airline would kiss you on the ear to have your business, I could not have them book my 7 o'clock Delta I have to buy it at the counter because we don't have plates and they're holding it until they find out, you know, what this is all about. And it would be instructive, Mr. Analik, would it not, if, it, if in fact we were talking about a company that had substantial sales of tutorial and could not demonstrate any sales of travel bookings. I that, would, that, that, would, that would not... Uh, look good for this company, would it? I have said in the trade press that I wouldn't represent such an organization, and there are some that I have refused. Unless they're pushing the travel, I can't take my travel industry representation. This is one client. Everybody else is travel. I can't get them upset by doing that. I wouldn't but, do it. But a year and a half out of the shoot, being in the top 10 percent of travel bookings in the country, tell does that tell you <coughs> something about uh, where this company is going and where its emphasis is and what is the emphasis of this company? It tells me that they are serious about travel or they wouldn't have had put the resources in me to build the travel aspect uh, that they're doing. Your Honor, uh, we would offer Exhibit 25 and uh, 26. So admit it. Um, 20, uh, uh, 25, uh, Mr. Analik, uh, an article in uh, Travel Age. You, I think you indicated one had just bought the other. Travel Age bought Weekly or Weekly bought Travel Age? Uh, weekly bought all the Travel Age were three. There were Travel Age West, Travel Age Mid America, and Travel Age uh, uh, South or East. There were four. Okay. And they're combining them in okay. Travel Weekly now has, has owns this. So this is getting thinner each week. And the Travel Age article basically announces rather prominently that multi-level comes to travel. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, is that the message going through the travel industry? It's going through it. And I can remember a year and a half ago, two years ago, when I started with the other ones, how hostile they were 
but they've come to recognize it because they make their money selling their magazine to the agents but getting their ads inside. It's free. No, this is free to the agents. But they make their money from the suppliers, and the suppliers are recognizing that there is this new agency on the horizon. There's another product that uh, Travel Max has, uh, <coughs> Mr. Analyk. That's their uh, getaways package. Yes. You may. I'm going to show the witness uh, exhibit number 11. Well, Your Honor, I'm, gonna, I'm going to object to uh, exhibits, uh, I mean, uh, at least uh, with regard to exhibits 20, uh, 26 and 25. I mean, these are all out of court statements, and uh, the witness is simply uh, expressing an opinion as to uh, these statements that are made in these publications. Your Honor, they're offered for the purpose of showing the interest of the travel industry. Uh, the growing interest in this, not only in this business, but in this kind of business. As opposed to the content, they're offered to show that there are articles in these publications about these. Uh, I mean, I would be happy to, uh, I mean, I would accept them for that purpose and I'd be happy, I mean, I'm not going to pay attention to what's written in the, uh, in the articles for purposes of this, uh, this hearing, although they're very just have no way of, of, of cross examining the reliability right, of the I understand that. And, uh, Mr. Analik is on the uh, stand, and with regard to his article, obviously, uh, we can cross examine to, um, as to the statements made therein. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I, I did not, I did note in this one is this uh, little quote here it's often difficult to tell the difference between a pyramid uh, organization and a legitimate MLM company on its face. Uh, which makes me feel a little better about the job that I have. That's true, Your Honor. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's our job this afternoon, Your Honor. All right. I, I'm not going to pay attention to the to what's in there. Your objection is uh, well taken in terms of cross-examining the uh, the articles themselves, but just for the purpose of showing that there are articles devoted to this industry, they'll be admitted. marked as a exhibit number 11. Could you describe that product? The VIP Getaways is a combination of a bunch of bargains. Uh, you might see one or two bargains, different destinations in the Sunday travel sections. Uh, but what they've done is they've combined them and put everything from RVs to seniors wanting uh, RV type sales to the type of cruises. Uh, the romantic cruise brochure, I represent half of these cruise lines. And the Carnival, the Dolphin, the Majesty uh, type of thing will make a deal because we're doing the promoting for them. So they'll give us a special price. You could probably get this on somebody else's special somewhere else. Because at 30 million, we're not. Amex, you know, we're not a billion dollar company. But we're big enough now that if we put it in our packages, they'll give us a deal. And they may do the printing or help us on it. And what this is is a combination of uh, <laughs> a little for everybody, uh, from the Disney World to the cruises to the ski to a hotel package. And it, it's a good combination of a potpourri of uh, travel bargains. Um, and exhibit uh, number 10, uh, is that the, uh, the company's brochure which describes uh, this, uh, this particular product? This 10? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it gives the basic associations. It, it gives you what your basic uh, package is. Uh, this this product, uh, my correct, sells for four hundred seventy dollars. Um, uh, somewhere in there, four seventy four five. It's under five hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, you know, based on on your experience in the travel industry, would you uh, say that that the individual who buys that is getting a good value? It's a better value than all of the similar clubs that are much more money because by getting this you have your package and you take what you want. Some of the others that are a lot more money, three, four, five thousand dollars to join something with a promise of bargains, you may be tied into that. This is, you, you look at it and if you see maybe two of these things or something you want to do in the next year, you can save enough money by paying the 470 so it's a bargain. Would you say it's a, uh, from the standpoint of the travel industry, it's a, a, a viable and sellable consumer product? Yes. Uh, it is <coughs> by something like Travel Max that's direct uh, sale to a consumer. An agency might not want to sell this because the person could go on this and then not go back to the agency. But a Travel Max would sell something like this because the person who buys it is going to look in it. If they're not going to go skiing, if they're not going to use the hotels, they're, they're not going to buy the package. So it's, the Kentucky it's not good to somebody who isn't going to be saving money and they're going to compare some of these things before they buy it. So for that standpoint, 500 bucks is you know, a reasonable price. So if a Kentucky uh, Travel Max uh, distributor sold this to a consumer, would you say you would have done a good service to that consumer? If the consumer is going to use any of these and save money, it's a value to the consumer. If a consumer doesn't want to ski, doesn't want an RV, doesn't want anything in here, then they shouldn't buy it. Your Honor, we would offer uh, exhibits uh, 10 and 11. Any objection, Mr. Turner? No objection. So, so admit. <laughs> Mr. Analyk, uh, um, you you uh, heard some of the earlier testimony and the opening statement about the Dare to Be Great case. Uh, were you here for that? Yes. Okay. And uh, the operative, uh, one of the operative uh, uh, statements in the Dare to Be Great case was, is the uh, is the product incidental to the opportunity? You you uh, recall that? Yes. Okay. In your opinion, based upon your experience in the travel uh, industry and your expertise in the travel industry, with Travel Max, is the product incidental to the opportunity? It's not incidental, it is what you're buying. You want to become an outside person, you want to get the training, the tutorial is the product by itself. Would you say this is a product driven company? Uh, using the term of Mr. Paisley uh, and from what I know of the company, it is a product driven company and I think has the easiest product to sell. I think travel will always be easier to sell than vitamins, uh, health care, and mops, and the rest of the stuff. It's just an easy product to get new people to sell. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Analik, have you uh, reviewed uh, the uh, Salamax tape uh, contained in uh, this travel Mac tape, which is plaintiff's exhibit uh, 